Welcome. This first segment we're going to be talking about in SOI 101 that will be involving entomology will be integrated pest management. Our learning objectives today will be to define pests and types of pests. We're going to understand why pests are a problem in agriculture today. We're going to define integrated pest management, IPM, and we're going to understand why we use IPM. What is a pest? A pest is any organism whose activities harm human resources. Pests compete with humanity for food and fiber, and that's why we try to reduce insects. Pests damage structures as termites. And pests are harmful to human health, as you guys, many of you know. Uh, insects can transmit different human pathogens, such as West Nile virus, malaria, yellow fever. Different types of pests. We have our weeds, which we probably have heard from our weed scientist. We have vertebrates, birds, and rodents. We do lose a lot of uh, crops to birds early season. Invertebrates, we have our insects, our mites, and our ticks. Nematodes, and our microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, and viruses. Pests are greater in modern agriculture than they were in the past, and why is that? Well, we provide an abundant food supply. When we go out and we plant our crops, we provide a genetically uniform a field for them to feed on for our pests. These are monocultures. And the reason that we do that as uh, humans is to provide a crop that we can harvest at one point that is uniform, provides the same amount of yield throughout the field. But by doing that, what we do is we provide a uniform food source for those pests to be able to build high populations. We also provide irrigation and fertilization. And in other words, our crops are very healthy, producing high yields, but by producing high yields, we also provide high pest populations. We've increased our trade. With greater trade comes greater pest movement. Insects can move into uh, packaging materials. They can be moved through soil. And several of our insects are actually invasives. In fact, most of the pest species in the United States are due to invasive pests that have been moved in. Pesticides, by using those which we need to use to control our different pro pest problems, actually disrupt natural enemies, and we're going to be talking about that in part two of this segment, but for, we just want to mention right now they disrupt natural controls. And it was from this concern of pest movement through the use of an abundant food supply and the fact that we do use pesticides that the integrated control concept was started. Uh, this was brought to the forefront by Stern et al. in 1959 in the Hill Guardia paper, where they really emphasized the harmonizing of biological and chemical control. Pesticides were being used very extensively at that point. We were in the age of insecticides, fungicides, herbicides. After World War II, being extensively used in agriculture, increasing our production. But at the same time, we were having issues as Silent Spring in 1962 brought up. But Stern et al. in 1959 really started the idea of an integrated, integrated control concept, which would then came to be the integrated pest management that we know today. So what is IPM? IPM stands for integrated pest management. And there's a long definition, and I'm going to be, we're going to go through that very extensively right now. This definition comes from the National Roadmap for Integrated Pest Management, which is updated in 2013. And it states that integrated pest management is a science-based decision-making process. And it's really key that we mention that it's science-based and it's a decision-making process. So integrated pest management, you get to make that decision. It's a risk assessment. It reduces the risks from pests and pest management-related strategies. So once again, reducing risk. It coordinates the use of pest biology, environmental information, and available technology to prevent unacceptable levels of pest damage by, most, by the most economical means while minimizing the risk to people, property, resources, and the environment. So once again, building on the research that's been done, that's looked at, that we do need to be able to control our different pests, but that by using pesticides, they can be harmful for, to the environment, but we need to mitigate that risk because we still need to be able to provide food for our populations, and those farmers and producers need to have an economic reason to be able to use those controls. Integrated pest management provides an effective strategy for managing pests. The key word is managing. You're not eradicating the pests, you're managing them. 
and you're doing it in agricultural, residential, and public lands, natural and wilderness areas are very important, and it provides an effective and encompassing low-risk approach to protect resources and people from pests. So why do we want to use integrated pest management? Well, re over-reliance on a single control method, pesticides, has led to four key points, resistance, resurgence, secondary pest emergence, and environmental contamination. And we're going to go through those. Resistance. Rece repeated applications select individuals that can tolerate pesticides. So by us going out every year and putting out an insecticide for insects, we are selecting for individuals that can tolerate those pesticides or those insecticides. These individuals that are more tolerant to the insecticides are likely to survive and reproduce, thus providing more individuals who are uh, tolerant to those, those insecticides. Over time, the pest populations consist only of those resistant individuals. And this results in higher use rates, so we have to go out and put higher rates. By putting out higher rates, this causes higher costs to the producer, and this is what we call the pesticide treadmill. So by putting out that first insecticide, we got very good control, but as we use more and more of it, we have to keep moving forward and forward to continually use more and more of that product. And you, there are many examples of pesticide resistance, not only just in insects, uh, out there right now. And eventually, this all leads to control failure, and so we have to select and use a different product. Resurgence. This occurs when a pesticide application reduces natural enemies, and natural enemies, we're going to cover that in a minute, our populations more effectively or to a greater extent than target pest populations. So here we have an insecticide that would kill off our natural enemies, our beneficial insects, better than it actually kills off our target pest. What is a natural enemy? A natural enemy is an organism that kills and decreases the reproductive potential or otherwise just reduces pest populations. So natural enemies for insects that are out there, lady beetles, coleoptera, uh, you have also regiviads. Um, several stink bug species are actually not only pests, but they can, uh, there are several that are also good natural enemies, such as the spine soldier uh, bug. These are all effective individuals in reducing normal pest populations. Natural en en enemies reduce pest populations primarily through predation, parasitism, and herbivory. What is a predator? An organism that attacks, kills, and feeds on other species. They can be generalists, feed on many, or they can be specialists. There are several specialists out there that feed on one or a few uh, closely related species. What is a parasite? A parasite is an organism that lives on or in an organism of another species, known as the host, from which the body of which it obtains nutriment. Different common pa parasites, which also are very common, are also common for our different uh, pests, are bacteria, fungi, protozoa, viruses, nematodes, and insects. These can also be parasites. And an herbivore is an organism that feeds on plants. So without natural controls, pest populations be rebound quickly and often to higher levels prior to the pesticide application. So what happens is that insecticide will kill off the natural enemies. Those natural enemies had been currently feeding on the pest populations. By reducing those, our pest populations resurge and can come back at very higher levels than we had previously. Secondary pest emergence, this occurs when there's a reduction, once again, in natural enemy populations that leads to outbreaks of new pests that formerly were not a problem. We've had that occur in, in cotton, is a very good example. We've removed the boll weevil. We've removed, also by using BT cotton, we've removed the different lepidopteran pests that we may have, our corn earworm. Um, fall armyworms, and instead what's happened is our ligus species, our plant bugs, have come out and it has been a secondary pest that has emerged from uh, outbreaks that were formerly not a problem. And finally, environmental contamination. A pesticide is, is any substance that's used to destroy a pest. We've covered what a pest is. Many of these are toxins, and the presence and persistence of these pesticides in groundwater, surface water, air, and soil are a concern to the environment. So here we have environmental contamination that's also tied in very much with social issues that are going on in the world, and we need to be concerned about that. So we, we, we've covered today for, our, for part one of our learning objectives. We've defined a pest and types of pests. We understand why pests are a problem in agriculture today. 
We defined integrated pest management, IPM, and we now understand why we use IPM. Thank you.